This video is for Darwin. I'm going to show you how to prepare these churrascos so you can cook them. As you can see, I got the big churrasco and I cut it into three manageable strips that are going to fit inside my cast iron. There's a non fatty side and a fattier side on most pieces. This little skinny piece here has some, and then you have the same thing here. What you want to do is try to remove some of this excess fat. You don't need all this. So all you're doing is cutting and trimming some of this excess fat. Here, I'm going to just cut this piece here. Now you could keep this on here if it's on a grill, but since you're cooking it inside, it's going to create a whole lot of flare up. So you want to trim this down. The meat has enough fat as it is. You don't need any extra fat. And yes, I am fat shaming the steak. Just pull it off carefully, just strip it off, it comes up pretty easily. nicely cleaned up. And with that, we're going to get to cooking and heating up the, the skillet. Okay, so here we are. The house is being prepped. As you can see, front door is open. Windows are open to create a current to allow the smoke to escape. There's no escaping it. Luckily, I have these big sliding glass doors that allow me to do that. The Steak has been salt and peppered on both sides with coarse salt and black pepper. And here we have the cast iron skillet. It's been slowly heating up. I started off at four or three, so like medium low. And then I slowly, I gradually, you know, raised it up. Now it's at a seven, so it's really hot. As you see, it started to smoke a little bit. Um, and that's the idea. You don't want to get it too ripping hot. Although they always say make it ripping hot. The reason I don't want it because because the cast iron he, uh, heats up unevenly sometimes, you're going to get burns. So here's what we're going to do. Olive oil, going to smoke up immediately. You just want to get a little bit going there. I'm going to grab my steak. I'm doing this with one hand, so I apologize. And put that in. It's going to shrink up so it'll fit. I'm going to grab another piece. I'm gonna grab these two little these two pieces. And there they go. <clears throat> what you want to do is you don't want to move them too much, but you want to keep them um, not too stationary because if they're too stationary, though. It could um, end up scorching on certain areas. Just in a few seconds, I'm going to raise the temperature a little bit because when I put the steaks in, they immediately drop this. So I'm moving it up to like almost a high, moving them just a little bit. You can see how it looks. You can see how there's certain areas of the steak that are getting um, more brown than others. So all I'm going to do is just move this. And just move it out of the way. Now there's a lot of smoke coming out. So if you look, because I have the uh, the house ventilated, there's no noticeable smoke. The fire alarm going on. So there are some people that say just leave it, don't move it, don't touch it to develop the crust. I don't believe in that, especially as it relates to cooking in this cast iron skillet. I think it's okay to move it. I'm gonna go ahead and flip it now, and you can see the color I'm getting on this. A nice color, but that's not done on that end either. So I'm flipping. I've already got a nice crust on here. So I'm going to give it another minute or so. And what I've done is that I let it sit there for about a minute and then I gave it another flip 
So I flipped over again. This is the original side here. You can see it's got a nice, a nice crust on it. The, the original side is now on the bottom. I'm going to give it just another minute, lower the temperature a little bit so I see it's getting a little hectic. And again, just imagine it's just you want to cook the meat at the same time, you know, all the way through. This is a relatively thin cut of meat, you know. So what I'll do is just so it doesn't burn or continue to burn. Now I got an awesome crust there. Just flip it again. Okay, if you didn't have the windows open, this would not work. I'm going to touch the meat just to see how it's doing. I can tell it's done this. This is still a very medium rare. This one here. This is more well done here. I can just tell just by touching it. So this is more done. So I'm going to be removing this now. Let me get the cutting board, which I had cleaned. Remove these smaller pieces to the cutting board. And I'm going to just babysit this a little bit longer, just flipping it a couple times so it's completely done. Again, if you want it more well done, you're going to have to lower the temperature and just cook it a little bit longer. But this piece here literally is just done. So the next important thing, as you can see, you just put it on here on the cutting board. And here are the pieces, and you just want to let it rest. You want to let it rest at least five minutes. Yeah. So you can see the sticks have rested. They're here. Um, and what we have is the, the, the pieces of steak. And if you look at the churraco, you'll see that there's these fibers, strips that are going across this way. If I were to cut it just like this and serve it, and you just cut it like this, you're going to be consuming a strip of meat that is not, although very tasty, it's going to be a, a long, a long uh, protein strip like this of meat. Instead, what you want to do is you want to cut the steak into pieces like this and cut it against the grain. That's the grain and you want to cut it against the grain. So by cutting against the grain is what I'm doing here, is that you're creating shorter strands, as you can see, so that the meat just falls apart and just pulls apart because of the, 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 uh, the, the grains. So again, the grains are going this way. You cut it into like a, a, a manageable piece, turn it, the grains are going this way, and you want to cut it against the grain. And then you get much more tender pieces. As you can see, the steak is perfectly cooked, juicy and delicious.